Eat shit and die, uh, ladies and genderqueer scots and gamers. I'm Mary Jane Blank, and, uh... Uh... I'm gonna play Gish because I don't know why. I do not know why I'm doing this. Oh wait, let me, uh, I have to adjust some things here. Okay, okay, we're good. Sorry, I don't do, like, a, the proper setup for this, so... That's why all my difficulties are because I'm lazy! Again, with... <clears throat> I need 100 times more followers. So, if it takes 100 times as long... Like, basically, I'm not even gonna be monetized for another, like, three years or whatever. So, who cares? Because I'm working on other stuff for, <clears throat> for many. Because I know also the thing that I would have to do to make this more viable, which is I need a... I would need a mad computer. You know. <clears throat> I would need a real... Rather than just the computer I happen to have. You know. Ah. And you might ask, be asking me why I'm not like a video essayist when that would make perfect sense too. And my reasoning is that it's not what interests me. Writing essays does not actually interest me. But I do know I have finally had conversations where like I just know too many random things, you know? <clears throat> and I, I'm a science fiction writer, and so I like, uh, you know, learning about different stuff, like, uh, I wrote a, my only full-length play, so it's a two-act, like, 100 pages, is about aliens coming to Earth, whoa, not coming to Earth, well, getting brought to Earth from... Europa. Like, basically, I'm trying to- Whoa! Fuck! My whole thing is, like, trying to sort of, like... Basically, I don't really necessarily- I don't necessarily break the laws of physics. I don't necessarily break any laws of reality as we know them currently. That was kind of my goal, was sort of to follow in, like, Carl Sagan's footprints. But, as a science fiction writer, I know that's weird to say, but... You know, uh, my favorite science fiction writers, like a hard science fiction writer. Uh, yeah, like Octavia Butler, or Isaac Asimov, or Arthur C. Clarke, or... Especially, especially Clarke and, and Asimov. Actually, like, I tried to read Heinlein, who used to be the big three, uh, of, of science fiction. They were, they were all around at the same time. Uh, Ursula... Uh, yeah, Ursula K. Le Guin, I think, is slightly younger. She I mean, she might be the same age as, as Arthur C. Clarke and Isaac Asimov. But uh, Octavia Butler is definitely from, like, the next generation. She's definitely, like, a generation younger, which means, like, she was born in the 40s <laughs> instead of born in the 20s. <coughs> but anyway. Um, all that is irrelevant. Point point made that I only know a bunch of irrelevant shit. And yeah, what I like about all these authors, there's this great, um, Mark Twain quote, just like, get your facts right and then distort them at your leisure. And so, yeah, I try to do that myself. I try to get everything as, make everything as accurate as possible, so like, I like to look up the countries I reference, or like, that I think about referencing, you know? And I, I have a feeling that I, I, I would really like someone to read that play, especially because I have a feeling some of the names I've chosen are like, that country's equivalent of John Smith. It's just that I have characters from like, 30 countries over the course of the whole play. Because the, the play is vignettes and, like, takes place over the course of, like, 
Uh, well, I, I like to think that it's like 200 years, but actually it's not. The course of the whole play has to be like... <clears throat> yeah, like 100 years. It's definitely multiple... Oh, and then the ending, but yeah, the epilogue. But yeah, no, it's, it's multiple generations for sure. And it definitely starts... Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, <coughs> I guess that is how it how it is. Is like basically the 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 play's story takes place over three generations, but the first generation is just described in the opening. You know, like I I did not decide to depict the part of of exploration and experimentation where like you know we find like this life form and like we just do these like you know random experiments. Pretty much anything we find that is what we will end up doing, is just like anything. Because we need to know how it reacts, basically. Like, that's how we learn. Find out, find out how it reacts. <coughs> and so, yeah, so like, the... The first, the first specimen of like an alien, if we, if we found an alien that was like, protozoic, or basically if it was some if it was either microscopic or small not necessarily microscopic but you know small um actually like a good well i was gonna say a good example could be the the tardigrade but if it, but we don't know for a fact and so everything on earth all life on earth shares dna right and like so i actually think that I, I actually thought, so I proposed in my, in that play, that, so the, <clears throat> the alien life on Europa, so we have a four-letter system, uh, Gattaca references it, that's the name of Gattaca, G-A-T-C, those are the letters we call the, uh, the ribonucleic acid, the, the amino acids that, uh, that make up our DNA, um, those are the letters. And then those com those letters combine to make genetic words, if you will. Um, yeah, and those words are like our expression, or you know, like it's how we look. You know, it's uh, trees have DNA, bacteria has DNA. Um, so it yeah, it determines everything. It it, it determines. Like, what I find interesting is the most distinct thing about life between the two biggest forms of life is how the cells, like... No, no, it's... That's right. It's, um... It's the nucleus. Eukaryotes have a nucleus, while prokaryotes... The contents of their nucleus is just, like, free-floating in the cell. And, like, that makes the, all the difference between bacteria and plants and animals. That's my favorite thing about eukaryotes. It includes all plants and animals. How fucking wild is that? Right? I have zero health. Like, literally one, one bad thing happens and I'm dead. Oh shit, I'm not... Crabs. I didn't think to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need to start as quick as possible. Passable. As quickly as passable. Strange. Uh, life is weird. Did you know that? I'm sure you have recognized this at this point. That, like, things are weird. Like, um. <clears throat> I don't know why. I think, you know, okay, so I, I was going to say my favorite thing, one of my favorite things about growing up is basically that, like, things that I knew were lies as a kid, like, have now become, like, accepted as such, you know? Uh, but, like, it wasn't, I didn't have those insights because I was any particular, it wasn't, like, for any particularly, like, I wasn't particularly, uh, smart or insightful necessarily, uh... It's just because...
Um, it's just because I was contrarian for a long while. So it just happened to be that, uh, you know, Disney movies lie to you, you know? Like, nothing about a Disney movie... Like, and, like, they're sort of supposed to be parables, right? That's kind of their thing. Uh, you know, fairy tales, stories, and whatnot. Uh, it's not supposed to be... Uh... Like... Um, it's a idealized... Everything about it is, is idealized and dramatized, right? It's both... Shit. Like, essentially, it's both better and worse than reality. It much better and much worse, you know? And that's how they sort of couch their their illusions. And that's how a lot of defenders of, of uh, that stuff, they like to obfuscate the, the deeper message with... Well, it's not even deeper message, necessarily. See, deeper implies, see, because of the auteur theory stuff, people assume what you mean by deeper message is a deeper intentional message, but no, 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 no. Art is so much more than whatever the artist intended. Like, it's not, like, bad to have more interpretations. In fact, like, I think that that's, like, one of the- that's awesome. Like, you want a lot of- oops. Uh, a lot of interpretations, not, uh... Just because. Just because the diversity of ideas is a good thing. Ah, crap. Go to my fuck. Um, <clears throat> pretty much. Like, for example, a good- like, what's funny too is there's a lot of universal things, like a lot of things that are very, uh, like, interestingly universal. Like, I, I love certain stereotypes for that reason, because there's, there's some stereotypes that just can apply s to so many different, uh, people that it's like, does this really even count anymore, you know, as like an ethnic stereotype? Like, I guess it does, still. Um, but, but it's, like, almost so ubiquitous, you know, like, the, um, the guilt, the, the mother driving guilt and wanting you to call her, there's so many different varieties of this particular, um, parental, uh, shaming, you know, the, uh, cause I was talking to my friend, my best friend, who is both Mexican and Jewish, and so she experienced both Catholic guilt and Jewish guilt, uh, not that that was what we were talking about, we were talking about the Catholic stuff, or the, uh, the Jewish stuff, because she definitely experienced that as well. Um, but, like, uh, Chinese grandparents, Chinese parents do the same, same kind of stuff, you know? I, I, one of my favorite revelations, random things I learned once, when I watched Bennett Foddy playing his own game, getting over it, uh, that was one thing he mentioned, is that, like, uh, the game was really popular in China, and, like, they, the fandom for getting over it, when you fall back to the ground, they say, welcome home, and, like, they make all these references to, there's, like, reference to a parental guilt song, like, a pop song about, like, call your parents and something like that, you know what I mean? And, uh, I just think that's fucking hilarious, like, I would not imagine, I can't imagine that, uh, you know, in the United States, you know, this is another level of, uh, of that messaging. But my point being, like, that concept is basically universal. It's just, like, the way we interpret it because of our other cultural biases, right? Because I'm a white American, whoa. And because of my particular family makeup and heritage, right? Uh... Uh, well, I've definitely, I definitely have a, well, or mo likely, I likely have Jewish ancestors. I, you have to go back thousands and thousands, like 10, 20,000 years to get to, like, Chinese ancestors. And even then, my ancestors were more like the, um, more in the, like, I don't know what the stands area is called, like, the steps and whatever. Um, I only know this because my my fucking parents did, not only did my, my mom and my dad do, like, a genetic thing, genetic test, got their genome mapped or whatever, but, um, my grandpa did as well, so, m like, I, we got to correlate some of that data between my mom and, and her father. Um, 
my my maternal grandfather there. Um, and so, yeah, that was what we found out, was that, like, <clears throat> that side of the family, basically, early human history left Africa, not human history, sorry, uh, like, 50,000 years ago, left Africa, traveled through uh, Iran, and uh, that, sort of the Central Asia, I guess you would call it, um, up through Finland, and so we're related to what are the Sami people of, of like, Finland and, and that area, but then my ancestors continue to move, and so... Uh, we are not only related to them, but we are related to the Swedish people. And that's sort of where the end of my ancestry before becoming American, uh, on my mother's side goes. My paternal grandfather's side, well, my, my maternal, sorry, my maternal grandfather's side. My maternal grandmother's side has a lot more variation, a lot of more old American, which is fascinating. Uh, and a, a little obviously concerning, too. The first, supposedly one of the first people in her family, my maternal grandmother's family, so therefore that side of my family, was born in the United States in, like, 1616. Like, it was, or, like, 1619, and, like, we had the proof. So, like, the, my first ancestor in the United States was before the Pilgrims. So, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I think it was the Dutch... Uh, Dutch colony colonies, um, and yeah, which I just think is funny because yeah, like again, uh, an, an interesting, another interesting, like cultural heritage, uh, probably true for me and my family since you know they were already white people here when the pilgrims showed up. So I'm assuming that there was probably some cross pollination there, but um, between the Benjamin family, I believe. Oof, I'm I'm really terrible with names and memory. And you you've I've documented well how much I smoke ganj. I blow dro. Ugh, I don't even like it anymore. I don't even like referencing Kanye West anymore. He used to be I used to enjoy his 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 whimsical rhymes and his heartfelt, uh, whatevers. I mean, and he had Jesus Walks, too. Like, we all knew he was a Christian. Come on. If you listened to Kanye's oof, you know, that was kind of what I thought. I, I like, the whole, like, dragon energy thing. I mean, I just don't buy into anything like that. I don't buy into magic woo bullshit. So, like, <clears throat> like, Essentially, what I'm saying is, like, you can't really sell me on a concept. A concept I buy into is because of the reasoning, is, uh, you know, t the, the, the realistic application for it, for example. You know what I mean? Like, there are certain things, like, I just believe that, like, I believe that, like, yeah, pretty much... Like, I believe that there is no, like, moral absolutism, and in fact, what the best, the, the best thing to do is actually, uh, is, is about why, you know, so, oh god, what I'm trying to say is I'm a pacifist, and I'm, uh, anti-killing in general, but I'm also, uh, adamantly pro-abortion, uh, I want pro-abortion rights, pro-abortion legalization, uh, like, I don't, I, like, what I mean by that is it, it is a resource that is necessary for people to have, and not making it legal only makes it more dangerous, uh, as my mom would attest to, because she came of age before Roe v. Wade, and so she knew people who had back alley abortions, uh, so, yeah, it's bad. People used to die uh, because of that, because either, you know, uh, unsterilized instruments or untrained doctors, because, like, a back alley abortion is a perfect place. If you think you're a doctor, but you don't have the credentials, then that's a perfect time. You know, desperate, desperate people 
uh, if you're if you're a sociopathic grifter, then like I could can't think of a better time uh, to pretend to be a doctor. But uh, then 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 because then you can do as much as you want. I mean, anyway, I I shouldn't I shouldn't be giving like advice on how to be evil, but how to do evil fucking things. I just feel like they don't need any help. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, I feel like it's so bad, it doesn't even matter. Like, all the most evil shit has already been thought up. And like, for example, okay, the oligarchy, the corporatocracy, I know when I call it a corporatocracy or an oligarchy, it sounds a little tinfoil hat, but bear with me. <coughs> In no uncertain terms, Corporate interests, corporate lobbyists, money, um, are what are really the interests that politicians uh, protect. It's not. Whoopa! It's not our interests, it's those interests. You know? <sighs> Hell yeah! Furthest I ever got. It only took me 15 minutes to beat the level, but I did it. I beat the level. Go fuck yourself. <sniffs> or 20 minutes, actually, I guess. Yeah, 20 minutes. Whatever. Cool. Let's keep going. Oh, look who it is, sister. Oh, look who it is, sister. It's the Gish, yes. Gish, we've been waiting for you, little one. You have many determined admirers. Yes, determined. Oops. Your little adventure ends here. There's no happy ending for you now. Yes, no happy for you. Shit. Gish doesn't talk because Gish is a goobal. Oh, good. I'm so glad that it was set up that way. You know, I particularly love the immediate, the immediate death. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna work. This isn't doing it. Um, also the grotesquerie. The grotesquerie's gotten pretty good, not gonna lie. Okay. I have a feeling that it's not... I'm missing something here. Maybe there's like a button I need to go hit or something. Whoa! How did that do me? How did that do me in? How did that kill me? Oh, I see. So that was the force. Uh, the force was with me, and that's how it killed me, because the force is with me always, you see. Oh, but that's how to do it, though. Oh, fuck me. Okay, 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 okay. I'm understanding. Get crushed. Ah, oh, but it kills me, too. Okay. No, 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 no. I've got this. I don't know how, but I have this. I don't know how- oh, I fucked it up already, uh, you Take me home. I only have 20 health. Did I start the level of 20 health or something? Oh, you start with 20 health when you restart the level? Oh, no, you have the health you have, I bet. I bet that's the deal. That's weird. I didn't know that. So restarting the level is a is is a glitch breaker. It's a oh you got you you have a problem. No worries. Oh thank goodness! I can climb the ceiling and everything. <laughs> yeah, run still. Continue to run still. Oh, okay. I had to drop it on them. So, did I fuck it up completely? Or will they kill themselves? I bet they will not, but... Did I fuck it up completely? 
Yeah, I didn't. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Fuck. Okay, I see. I understand the situation now. What I need to do... Uh-oh. I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. Okay, what I need to do... I'm gonna climb. Always climb out of bed in the morning on a... Truly made of sand, I know. It doesn't rhyme, but the rhyme on the table has been getting out of hand. Anyway. <sniffs> Keep going, gish. Why did that kill me? What would you do if I crank out of glue? We just give my padapa on me. Lend me your ears, and I'll skip my nabow. I don't know that song. I don't know that dude either. I never knew his name. I heard that version first, though. So I always thought that was the legit ass version. And then I heard the Beatles version. I was like, oh, cool. This is the, like, good version. Oh. F off. Go F yourself. Go go to F. F. Uh, 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 almost. Almost. But not quite. Not quite. But almost. Yeah, why do the corners hurt you so much? Like, this is something that, like, mechanically I do not understand. Like, I understand, I think, like, that it happens because... Fuck. Um, whoa, hey, oh, hey, ho, hey, ho, let's go. Skiba de big up, up, stebi db deep boop, the blitzkrieg bop, a o, let's go, shabalamba ding dong. I'm sorry. The Ramones are grandpa music for punks, okay? I said it. And you have to live with that information. That, like, just like your grandpa might have listened to, like, the Sinatra, or maybe even someone predating that, uh, that's the Ramones. Now. You are the grandpa. You are now the grandpa. Even if you're a woman, like me, or a grandpa. No. I guess you could be a grandmother. But grand punk grandma sounds so much cuter than punk grandpa. Punk grandpa sounds like, Err, you darn kids, turn that music up! Uh, you're not listening to me anything loud enough! You're that classical shit! Fuck it, get that out of here! I want my- I want my ass rotten seven inches, my dead Kennedys LPs! Hey, have you ever heard of the Reagan youth? Who's Reagan? And why does he have a youth? No, no, I mean, shit. <laughs> Reagan was this guy before I was born. Truly. Truly. Truly was, before I was born. Actually, incorrect. I was born literally months before the 1988. American election, so Ronald Reagan was president for the first, like, five months of my life. <laughs> or, no, no, the first four months of my life. Like, until, uh, George W, or George H.W., George, uh, George Old the Bush. George Bush the Old, as they call him. That's his official president name, is President Old Bush. Um... Um, but of course, because he was the first Bush president, um, his son is the one who got assigned, he actually got assigned Young Bush. As his, uh, as his, um, very clearly official, uh, what's it called? Secret Service name. Very Secret Service. Very secret. It's Baby Bush. Actually, that would be really bad for anything secret. That's like... 
so stupid. That's like making your fake name your real name, but like, yeah, one letter changed, or like, a different version of the same thing. <laughs> so steep. Such a steeper. Hey! I wonder, can I use physics and momentum to make this a deadly weapon? No, I cannot. Well, I just plopped myself very gently down like a dollop of black goo on top of this enemy. And I will have to admit to myself, I admit, I admit to myself, I fucked this all up. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't fuck it up, I simply don't know what I'm doing. Oh, hey, can I, can I push them in? Hey, get pushed. There we go. I know what I'm doing now. You push them in. You just walk over- No. I don't know, I'm sorry that I keep, keep referencing that. I just think it's funny, and yeah, okay, I, the angry video game nerd, without the, the nerd, I couldn't have made these videos. So, there you go. Well, thank you so much for joining me. James Rolfe, I will drive you to the airport. And if you are not James Rolfe, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are James Rolfe, like, subscribe, and comment. I am James Rolfe. Please take me to the airport. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bullshit!